So input fields, I click on that. Quite simply, is a little bit like imagining this was an Excel spreadsheet and that you wanted to uh, have multiple columns. So at the moment, we've got one called base, and that's just the, the kind of the default setting. What if we wanted to be more clear and we wanted to say, well, this is actually the, uh, the base price. So let's change the label of that one. So we could call it price per widget. We can then select whether that's going to be a remaining cost or an actual spent cost to date on the on the project. Um, and then the next thing you'd say, well, OK, price per widget. OK, it, maybe it's uh, $10 a widget. But how many widgets do you need? So this is where you then use the add input field and it adds another column beneath it. So we'll change that to. Quantity. Uh, you might also want to call it scope or some other word, whatever your corporate vernacular is, then use that. So it's also a, a possible to show total. So if you want to see total uh, on that one or on that one, you don't need to show it because there is going to be a, a sort of totalitizer kind of column at the end. You can see. Well, it will appear in a moment. But the interplay between these two um, columns that we've now got the price per widget and then the quantity. So how many widgets do we need is shown at the bottom. So the default is to just multiply each column as it comes in. So the first one multiplied by the next and the next and the next and the next. You could override that and say, no, I, do, I want to do uh, a, a base plus a quantity. Uh, notice that the base and quantity is referring to the ID and a little note on IDs is that these have to be um, like a single word. It can't have spaces and like we have with the label where we've got price space per space widget. It has to just be a, a single thing like that. So just a one word or a single number if you prefer. So. What that's what you can do with the remaining formula is kind of customize that. But for today's demonstration purposes, I think that's all we really need is the base price and the quantity. And I'm just going to hit OK. So you can now see that. We've got our price per widget and then there's a column called price per widget distribution. There's then the quantity that we just added and quantity distribution. So each time you use input fields to add a new column, you're actually not adding one column you're actually adding two they come in pairs so you always have what is the value and then you have an uncertainty distribution as an optional extra you, you can leave it blank if you want um, and if you want to completely ignore it because you don't believe there's going to be any uncertainty on the price per widget then you can always come into this little um, button over here and that will bring up the field selector so you can toggle on and off a variety of columns uh, in this menu if you want to just ignore it entirely. So that's what the input fields does. OK, so that was input fields. Uh, what's coming up next is the variables button. But if you spotted the there was a thing, there was a drop down menu on the right hand side of the input fields so when you're customizing those. Uh, and it talks about actual and remaining costs in there. Now, if that's of interest to you and you can't wait, then actually that comes in uh, greater depth for explanation later on in video 23 in the series. So you might want to consider skipping ahead there just to see what that was all about. OK, but otherwise uh, we're going to go and talk about variables next. OK, see you in that one.